In this lesson, we will learn how to check if the script tag of our Shopify app is already installed or not. That way, our app would not be able to duplicate the script tag since we only need one script tag per installation. More on that after this intro. In the previous lesson, we learned how to create script tags and install it to our dev store using GraphQL. So if you're watching this video without watching the previous lesson, I highly suggest you watch that video first before continuing to this lesson. You can click the eye icon right over here or you can check the description box below. Otherwise, if you have watched that video already, we can just continue. Let's start off this tutorial by fixing the script tag installation. Previously, whenever we load this component, we create a script tag and install it to our Shopify store using this function, create script tag mutation. But that's not a good idea because like I said in the last video, the app will just spam the JavaScript file and we don't want that. So usually what I do with my own Shopify app projects, I create a button that will allow the merchants to install the script tags or we create a button that will execute this function on click. However, before that button is loaded, we check if the script tag is already installed to the Shopify store. If it's already installed, then we should not allow the merchant to click this button. Otherwise, if the JavaScript file is not yet installed, then the merchant should be able to install the Shopify script tag. So what we're going to do first is to create that button. So here, going back in the script page, scripts page component, Let's get rid of this div and replace this with an empty fragment. And then inside of this empty fragment, we create a div. And then inside of this div, we create a button. And then we're going to use the on click. And then we'll pass here the function create script tag mutation. And we can now get rid of this function here. Okay. So this function will only be executed if we click this button. But we're not done yet, we need to import that button from the Polaris. So import, and then button. This is coming from the Polaris. So at Shopify, Polaris, okay? So we should have this button now, but we can also add a label before we continue. Inside of the button, we can say something like install script tag save it now we should have the following button now this will only execute the mutation if we click this button now let's continue and create the state that will check if the script tag is installed or not so go back to vs code and then at the very top of the component function right before the query we're going to create a state so constant and then we can just call the variable is installed and then the function set installed and then we're going to use the use state hook and by default we'll set this to false okay and don't forget to import the use state hook from the react so import and then should be use state from react okay now we can use the state here in the button, after the on click, we can create the disabled and then only set the value depending on the value of the state. If this is set to true, then the disabled attribute should be set to true. So here inside of the curly braces, we'll check if the is installed is true. If it's true, then we'll set the disabled to true. Otherwise, we'll set this to true. False. So we'll just create an inline condition here in this um, attribute, okay? So now if this variable, which is a Boolean variable, is set to true, then the disabled attribute should be true. Otherwise, if it's false, then we'll set the value of the disabled attribute to false, okay? So let's continue. So the next thing that we're going to do is to get the script tags from our Shopify store and check if the script tag that we're supposed to install is installed to the Shopify store. So after this state, we're going to create a new variable and we'll call this check underscore script underscore tag. And then we'll use the GQL and then we're going to create a query here. So query and then the query is going to be script tags. It's going to be plural. 
So we're going to use pagination in this query. So we'll just get the first 250 script tags. I know that's a lot. You can just limit this to 50 if you want. So we'll just, I guess we'll just set this to 50. And then we'll use the edges and then the node and we'll get the ID and then the SRC. Now the next thing that we're going to do is to execute the following GraphQL query using the useQuery hook. Previously, we used the useMutation hook to create a script tag. But this time, since we are retrieving a script tag from our Shopify store, we are going to use the useQuery hook. So here in line two, we are going to use the or we're going to import the use query hook, okay? So once again, here in line two, we are going to import the use query hook from the Apollo client. And then after that, we are going to use that. So constant, and then we're going to destruct, um, structure the following variables. We're gonna need the loading, we're gonna need the error, and then the data. And then the value is coming from the use query response or use query hooks response and then we'll pass here the graphql query that we created here in the um, check script tag so we'll just pass the following variable check script tag okay now we are getting the following error and that's because here in the use mutation we already declared the following variable so we can just rename this to something else like um create script tag mutation data since we don't really need this so we can just rename that to something like that and then we'll just call this data okay we're going to use this later on so the next thing that we're going to do is to check if there are errors in the error variable so underneath of this we're going to check if the error is set so if there are errors then we can just um, return the error or we can just create a set of backtick symbol so we can create um a sentence or an error so error and then we can just interpolate here the error message so error dot message okay so I don't want to continue here if there are errors that's why we are checking first if there are errors if there are errors then don't execute any of this just return that just say something like oh error and then what is the error so we're going to interpolate that error in this message okay so after checking if there are no errors then that's the time we are going to check if the data the data variable is undefined or not so here if and then if the data is not equal to undefined then we're going to get those um, script tags so we can just console that log first the data something like that and next up is the loading. We're going to use this to change the button from just a normal button to a loading button. That way, uh, we know that the, the query is still processing the GraphQL query or the use query hook is still processing the GraphQL query. So this is going to be a Boolean variable. This is going to be true if the GraphQL query is still in the process. This is going to be false if the query is already processed okay so we can use this variable in the loading property or attribute so loading and then we can pass here the variable um, loading you can actually do it this way since it's going to pass the boolean value so if this is true then the loading attribute or property is going to be set to true otherwise if this is false if the loading um, variable is set to false then the loading attribute or property is going to be set to false you can do it this way or you can do it this way so let's just follow what we did previously so loading and then we're going to check if that is true if it's true then set it to true if it's false set it to false you can do it like that okay so we can just save this and go back to our app and as you can see we have the following loading icon and then it turns into a button that says install script tag so we can just open the console we can open the inspect elements and then the console tab and here we should have the following object if you open that we have the following script tag connection and we have the following edges it's an array so inside of that we have the following script tags so this is the first script tag this is the id and this is the src 
So the second one, the third one, and then the fourth one. So this is the script that we installed today. All of this from zero to two are the script tags that I installed using this app. Once again, just keep in mind, all of the script tags uh, were installed by this app, the app Laravel. You will not be able to see here the script tags that were installed by other Shopify apps, okay? So once again, all of this are the script tags that you installed yourself or that were installed by the Shopify app that you are working on, okay? So we can just continue. I want to get the following script tag. So this is the script tag that I want. So if you want to filter out, if you wanna remove this, then what you're going to do is to use the SRC field. So we can just go back to VS Code and then we can create first a variable to separate this, um, this URL. So I'm going to create a new variable and we can just call this um, script underscore tag underscore URL. It's going to be a string and then we can just move the following URL to this variable here. And then we can finally use this variable. So you can just copy that. And then here in the script tags query, after the first, you can use the SRC field and then apply here the script tag URL. So script tag, we can just interpolate it here. Script tag, script tag URL. Once again, you can specify the script tag by using the SRC field. If you don't want the following script tags, then you can specify which script tag you want to get. So you can use that SRC field to do that, okay? And the next stop, going back here in the mutation, we need to interpolate the URL, so script tag URL. Now, if we save this, all of this should disappear, except the URL that we set in the SRC field. And there you go, now it's loading, and we have the following script tags object, and inside of this, we only have one script tag, and that is the script tag that we want. Now, since we already have the following script tag, that means we already installed the script tag. So this button should be disabled. So we can do that by going back to VS Code and here in the if, if data is not undefined, then inside of this, we can check if the data dot script tags dot edges. And since this is an array, we can set the index zero and then we can get the node and then we can check if the SRC is equal to the script tag URL. So script tag URL. And then if this condition is true, that means we already installed the script to our Shopify store. So we can use the set installed to set the is installed state to true. So going back here in this condition, we can use the set installed and then set the is installed state to true. Okay, but we are not done yet because since this is a state, we need to check first if the is installed is set to false. So after the first condition, so after this condition, we can add another condition. So we can use the ampersand and then check if the is installed is false. So you can just negate this by adding exclamation mark. So if this is false, then set it to true. Because if you don't have the following condition, it's just going to re-render everything and you don't want that. So make sure that you check first if the is installed is false before setting it to true, okay? So let's try and save this. Let's go back to our app, refresh the page, and there you go, now it's loading. And now it turned into a disabled button, which means you can no longer click this button, which means it already installed the script tag. And there you have it. In this video, we learned how to get the script tags from our Shopify store using GraphQL. We also learned how to filter out the script tags that we don't need. And we also learned how to create this button for our script tag create mutation. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about Shopify app development in Laravel, make sure that you're subbed to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you won't miss our future uploads. In the next lesson, we will learn how to delete script tags. But in the meantime, if you want to watch more videos, you can check out this video right over here. It's about liquid. But if you want to watch other videos, like I don't know, GraphQL, you can check out this video.